All right, so chapter two is about acids and bases, and this is something that you covered in Gen Chem 2. And we're going to talk about um, acids and bases in terms of what you know from Gen Chem 2, but we're also going to go into more detail. So acids and bases, um, we know the Bronsted and Lowry definitions say that an acid loses a proton and a base gains a proton. And so to identify the acid with the Bronsted and Lowry definitions, we expect the acid to have a proton, and we expect the base to be capable of bonding to a proton. To make a bond, you need electrons. And so the base should have a lone pair or a pi bond that can then make a new bond. Um, when we look at the reaction given here, you should see that we have HCl and H2O. And HCl is labeled as the acid and H2O as the base. And what happens is that chloride loses a proton. And when it loses a proton, it keeps the bonding electrons. Okay, so we can physically draw this out. And in organic chemistry, we use arrows to show what happens to the electrons when we have a reaction. So what happens here is that water, if you look at the products, changes from H2O to H3O+, and so it gains a bond to H. And so we're, I'm going to show that an arrow goes from a pair of electrons on the oxygen to the hydrogen. And what that symbolizes is this is where the new bond is going to be, between these two atoms. Then I'm going to show that since hydrogen can only have one bond, we know that the other bond has to break. So the bond between hydrogen and chlorine is the bond that breaks. And we can show that by drawing an arrow from the electrons in the bond to where the electrons go when the bond breaks, which is on chlorine. And so in the products, you see that chlorine has an extra set of electrons compared to HCl as a lone pair. It goes from having three lone pairs to four lone pairs. Um, and that H3O plus has one less electron on pair on the oxygen because that electron pair is now in a bond to oxygen. Okay, um, one of the things that you're going to need to be able to do is to write acid-base reactions. In order to write the reactions, I want you to be able to identify the acid. Um, the acid is going to have some characteristics that help you identify it. It's going to have a proton that it can donate. It may have a positive charge. And the pKa of the proton should be lower than the other molecule if the molecule if if there are two molecules in the reactants that have bonds to protons, the molecule that has the lower pKa for its pro bond to H is the molecule that acts as an acid. Now, the base, when we try to identify the base, it should have a negative charge. 
um, it should have, a, and it doesn't have to have a negative charge. I'm, I apologize. Okay, so a base may have a negative charge. I should write that, may. I'm just going to pause for a minute. So a base may have a negative charge and it will have either pi electrons or lone pairs. A molecule cannot act as a base if it doesn't have pi electrons or lone pairs because a base must have a set of electrons that can bond to H or whatever atom is acting as the positive charge. Because we're going to talk about acids where hydrogen is not the positively charged atom performing the duty of an acid. Okay. Most acid-base reactions are irreversible, but you need to know which reactions most acid-base reactions are reversible, but you and um, only a few are irreversible, and you need to know which ones, what affects the reversibility or irreversibility of a reaction. So, um, if we have a strong acid-base reaction, like strong acid HCl, which has a pKa of about negative three. Don't quote me on that. I know it's a negative value. Negative pKa's are very acidic. When we have a strong acid, it always dissociates. So we say that this reaction is irreversible because the reverse is um, unfavorable. It has a very low um, KEQ to go in the in the opposite direction. We also have to remember our definitions for conjugate acids and conjugate bases. A conjugate acid has one more proton than the corresponding base. So if you have an acid-base pair, let me draw an example. So say we have methanol or methyl alcohol. Um, what would be the conjugate base of methyl alcohol? A conjugate base has one less proton than the acid. And so to draw the conjugate base of methanol, what you would do is subtract a proton. Okay, if I take off H+, plus, the bond electrons stay so let's draw that out. We have, excuse me, let me, what is going on? Where am I? No, 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 yes. Okay, sorry. C, H, H, H. O, H. Okay, so I remove H plus.
which means I remove hydrogen that has no electrons. So all I do then is draw the exact same structure, but without the hydrogen bonded to oxygen. And you have to pick which hydrogen is the most um, likely to break off and you do that by knowing the pKa's. And we'll go over those later in the presentation. But I can tell you that a hydrogen bonded to a heteroatom, as I defined last time, anything that's not carbon or hydrogen, is going to be, so a hydrogen bonded to oxygen, nitrogen, or any atom that isn't carbon or hydrogen, will be most likely more acidic than a hydrogen bonded to carbon or hydrogen. Okay, so, and then, since we're only removing H, we keep that bond, but it should no longer be a bond. It should be a lone pair because it's not connecting to another atom. So I'm gonna make it a lone pair I'm going to go ahead and make this a Lewis structure instead of a Kekul structure and put in my lone pairs on the alcohol. So now oxygen has three lone pairs and one bond and it will have a negative charge. And so this would be the conjugate acid, the alcohol. It has one more proton than the conjugate base. by molecular formula. It should also have one more negative charge. So the conjugate base should have um, a difference in charge from the acid. And the base should be more negative than the acid. So when you look at NH4 plus the acid, if the molecular formula of the conjugate acid has one less proton and is one more negative, then you should call it NH3 and it should have a neutral charge. And if you draw the Lewis structure for NH3, you'll find that ammonium has five valence electrons and five minus the three bonds minus the two dots gives us a formal charge of zero.